everybody, Billy from Mutation Creation. We got Austin on the camera, and uh, we're gonna do something that uh, many people have asked me, and uh, and uh, we're gonna do it. And uh, shout out to uh, Bear from Red Onion Reptiles. He's one of the people that have asked, along with a few others. So uh, here's the video you guys want. But before we get into that, huge shout out, VIP Morphs, fellow Canadian not slacking on the back even though he's Canadian pretty cool logo here we go so a lot of people ask how long you know um, after you cut how long do you leave them in your incubator or do you put them in your tub um, when do you uh, open them up bigger to look you know because we, we just basically cut the top um, when do you, you know when do you put water in do you put water in the incubator or what you know how long after you know do they shed etc we're going to try to explain that here so here is the clutch that we just cut the other day and many of you were like hey Billy the odds are you know you didn't really miss the odds of hitting a grail is one in eight and I was saying it's one in four because when I see lav and leopard I was thinking leopard lav leopard you know leopard head and leopard het, I mean la lavender het and lavender het, oh I'm one in four, but it was lavender het and leopard double het. So you are correct, one in eight. I'm glad people are out there knowing what the genetics are. Let me turn this down. Don't I normally say everybody turn it down and of course I forget my own rule? Oh Billy. So um, turn that off. So you are correct, one in eight to hit a lav uh, clown. Um, Austin just pointed out that we might have even hit one, the very first one looks that like I opened. It. it looks like it. So uh, here's, here's what they look like. So if you notice, when we cut our eggs, we cut one little slit, okay? We don't cut them wide, we don't open them up, we don't pull the animal out, we just leave them. Now this is several days later, they're still not out, but one thing that you can look, I'm just gonna take this tray out because this is what we're gonna start doing, okay? We take the tray out, uh, one thing that I really recommend people do, if you guys are using the uh, light diffuser or the egg crate, the white little squares, um, in the past, um, you know how when you, you cut them with side cutters or whatever, and, and they're usually sharp when you, when you make them smaller, because um, it's plastic and when you cut them, they're still kind of sharp. Probably about 10 years ago, um, I, I left my eggs on them, and when the babies came out, I just took the, the, the that the eggs that were, you know, that they were out of, I, I would throw them in the garbage and uh, thought nothing of it. I've come back and I've had a couple go in and out and weave and then cut themselves and, and end up dying because they got trapped going in and out of that or, or they've cut themselves trying to move between the side of the tub and the sharp edge of that and I, I've lost animals. So if you do cut them, take the, that, that egg crate away. Um, these aren't bad because you know, you're, you're not gonna, there's nothing, there's nothing sharp. With great design, um, this is the Dragon Hatch. I've also used for years the Easy Hatch. There's nothing sharp on them. They're not gonna get in here or get trapped. So you can leave them in. I sort of like to sort of take them out so that when they have, they have more room and they're on the soil or not the soil, the vermiculite or whatever substrate you use. Um, so that's just a tip. Um, so. Once they're here, what will happen when you do cut them, you'll have a lot of veins. Well now if you look over here, there's no more veins on the wall. So now I feel comfortable to basically make a bigger window. I do not make these big windows the very first time I cut and I don't recommend it. So there's a garbage right here. So now if I do this, okay, notice how there's no veins or blood vessels or anything else that I'm cutting. It, it, it's all clear. Now I have a big window and now I can look and say that's definitely a leopard lavender. Okay, and, and this is a thing, a little tip from Justin Kabilka. So, there's one. If I look here, I'm, I'm gonna look. Yeah, this looks good too. So now I can open this up and make a bigger window. And this is several days later. Sometimes, you know, I might get to one that, that the veins are still on it. So I'll just leave it the way it is until um, it either comes out on its own. And, you know, people ask, when do they come out of the eggs? I've had them come out. 
the same day I cut them. I've had them come out three days, five days, and, and there's always one that stays like, hey, I, you know, all the other ones are out, pretty much going into a shed, and the other one's just sitting here chilling. So um, that answer depends on the animal, you know? They're not all the same, so there's a clown. And I thought this one was a leopard clown. It is. It is a leopard clown, but the reason it is because when I, when I did it, it was so much pattern. Because you know how leopard clowns are sort of, uh, you know. That's the head part influence. Yeah, there you go. So now here, I noticed there's no, uh, no veins. So now I feel comfortable to make the window. And like I said, I do this now, not the very first day. So look at that. There we go. Even this one looks like part as well. Well, they're all 50%. So it's very good that we can see the markers because that'd be great because that would make some nice powerhouse. So we go here. Let's take the next one. Same thing. So I feel comfortable to open it up. And like I said, this is just what we do. You can do whatever you want with your eggs, but we've been doing this for a while and we've changed and we've adjusted. And this is where we feel at this stage of the game is uh, what we feel most comfortable and, and like to do. And uh, now, you know, you can see, like, wow, guess what? They're not struggling, they're, they, uh, I can take a look without disturbing them. I can pretty much tell the genetics and uh, it's a lot easier than for them to actually end up getting out of the egg. They just crawl out once they absorb all the yolk, uh, however long that may be. Uh, number seven, sorry, five. Let me just get rid of that and just continue here. So they're still confined in. They still have their space. The yolk is still in there underneath. They will crawl out in a day, maybe later, uh, a couple days, whatever. Do not pull them out on your own for any reason. Let them absorb the yolk and do what they do. Here's another egg, which is great. And uh, you can see there, that's a pip. They, 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 they did that on their own, but. So, just cut around and keep going over here. And this, I said, this doesn't even have to be done. You know, with that, with that slit that we originally cut, this one here, that's more enough room for that animal to get out when it's ready. This is just something that we do, you know, gets a little, I guess, more oxygen in, but I mean, it's for us sort of to ID a little better. And, uh, you know, it's exciting, you know. I can't wait to see if it's a male or a female. But do not do that. Don't try to sex the animal when it's still in the egg, please. Uh, I've seen people do. I'm like, what are you doing? Leave it alone. It'll come out in a few days. Worst case scenario, you're waiting a week. You know, I have some people that I know that don't even bother sexing the animal until they've actually had their first shed, which is great also. Whatever works for you. I'm a little too impatient. I like to, uh, to find out sort of sooner than later. And the last egg we have here. So see how there's a little bit of vein still on the wall? So I'm gonna be careful with that side. Um, and this is the one that Austin thinks may be a grail. Yeah, the head pattern looks. We'll different. see, I'll be happy. I mean, so see how I went a little higher? And if you look down here, there's still some veins intact. You don't wanna go cutting through those, so. Is that a grill? It has some clown-like pattern. Especially, that actually could be. looks like this one. Yeah, I actually think I hit one. And look, it even has pie markers too. So I'm not gonna fiddle with it, but we could have actually hit a grill instead of just the laugh. So I'm gonna be super happy, but I mean, in this video, I want I want to you know let people know. Once we cut that little slit, we put them back in the incubator, um, we, we leave them on the tray. 
you can still leave them on the tray. Uh, I wouldn't recommend um, if, if it could get in between anything or there's any sharp edges here. There's no sharp edges. I can do this all day long. I'm never going to cut myself. Um, what a place to cut yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm never going to cut myself here uh, or the snake isn't going to uh, get harmed with it. There's no big space for them to go in and get tangled where those little, I know, you know, one inch or sorry, um, I guess uh, half inch by half inch squares, they can get in and out of there. I've seen it myself. So um, anything to do to, to, to basically make sure that the animal can't get harmed is what I recommend. Um, if you want to do this and make the windows, um, if you see here, if you make the windows, this one's already looking to come out sniffing. What is that stuff, you know? Is that, is that okay to come out onto? <laughs> so, you know, if you just leave them like this, all the sacks were broken on them. So we didn't go in and try popping them. So when I do that little thing and, 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 and sort of, you know, squeeze and pinch the top and cut it off, I don't go stick it in. If there is the sack that's still there, I don't pop it. That'll happen on their own. So these guys here, if you want to open the window like this, I recommend doing this days, days later. And as long as on the side, oh, here's a good one here. See how the side here, there's no veins on it. And, and that to me is a good indication. And watch, this animal here will come out on its own. We haven't even forced it. So, you know, this one here might come out in, in, in you know, these ones here might come out in three, four days. This one will probably be out in half an hour or it's gonna explore take a look and then pop back in and say, hey, I'll come out a little later. Or he might wait for someone else to do it and say, hey, is it all right to come out? Yeah, man, <laughs> you never know. But we will put these back in the incubator. I know other people, there's, there's many different ways. I've seen other people at this stage now transition them. Instead of going on the vermiculite, they actually go and they'll set up a, another tub like this with cocoa husk, you know, if they use cocoa husk, and they have the cocoa husk that's, that's damp, so it has the humidity still, and they put the eggs right on the vermic, the, the cocoa husk, so when the uh, animal comes out, it's on the substrate it's gonna be used to or on for most of its life. So that's actually, I've never done it, but I think it's actually great, and, and that, you know, a lot of people have done it and it works. It actually makes sense also. The thing is, is I already have this vermiculite. It's already the perfect temp. It's already moist and, and causing humidity and, and stuff in there. And uh, I just figure I've been doing it for so long, I'm gonna stick to this method. Although other people are trying new methods and it's working and it is great. So see what you'd like to do. Um, also, when these animals do come out, okay, you don't need to put a water dish in, you don't need to try feeding it. You don't do any of that until the animals have shed for the first time. They will have enough, um, um, I guess, I guess you call it food, enough food. Help me out here, Austin. Nutrients from the abilities. Nutrients from the, yeah, when, when they absorb the yolk. Uh, that is like their first meal. So you don't need to put water and you don't need to put, you know, try feeding it when they first come out of the eggs. I leave that, they'll shed, what, seven to 10 days later um, okay. after they come out of the egg? Just over a week usually. Yeah, so seven to 10 days range, you know, and uh, you know, some will, you know, you'll have three or four that, that, that do it right away and one another day later and one another day. So we just leave them all in, regardless if they've shed or not, until everyone has shed. And um, we've even left them in another day or so after they've all shed and then filmed and put them away. So, um, you know, it isn't a rush to get them into a tub with water and food. Let them do what they do naturally. Come on out, absorb the yolk, then they'll come out. Uh, they will, um, you know, go into their shed once they shed then you can decide after that when they've all shed now's the time to take pictures film or just put them right into their their tub uh with water and then uh, even a day or so later um you know we don't feed we feed on a schedule so if we put these away friday or saturday uh they're not going to get fed to the following week so um you know there, there's not a real rush oh my god they haven't had a meal you know ever on their own um, except for the absorption of the yolk let's take them put them in a tub and feed them right away you don't need that i would personally let them settle in see their new enclosure they're away from their siblings and and and, and stuff um, it'll be a little transition for them they'll be on a new substrate they'll have a water dish let them do that 
a different source of heat. There'll be a, because uh, when they're in the incubator, it's all like 89, 90, it's, it's all the same humidity. When they go in here, they can thermoregulate, which means they can choose to go to the cool side and they can go to the heat. Plus, uh, they'll, they'll, get, they'll learn that. They'll learn that there's a hot spot and there's a cool side and they'll learn to thermoregulate between that. And then a few days later, five days, three days, it, it doesn't really matter. Then try giving them their first meal. So um, I hope this video helps or, you know, it gives you guys maybe a different bunch of options to, to do. It's like, oh, I didn't know you guys did that. Oh, because I see people opening. He's on his phone. <laughs> Show your phone. <laughs> I'm on a phone call right now. Oh, so you see people doing this the very first time, time they cut. I don't, especially if, if you cut, you know, a little earlier before they pip. It's definitely a girl. And it looks like we oh, hit man. a grail. That's why you need me here for the cutting, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need you here for a lot of things, bro. But you also want to have a life, right? Yeah, you went away for four days, right? So, you know, I was a little impatient. I I'm trying to hit a grail. This is my first grail ever. So Austin's not here. Should we wait? Hell no. Let's do it. <laughs> I'd rather make mistakes on misiding an animal or screwing up the genetics or, or the odds of the genetics where you guys caught, which is amazing. And then find out later when you come and, you know, amazing people from, uh, you know, from, from watching put in, hey, Billy, no, your chances were actually one in eight. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah. So uh, I was just too excited, but I mean. And a ringer to boot, too. Look at that. Is there a ringer? Yeah, a nice orange ringer right there. Uh, we'll see when it comes out, man, but. Yeah, if coming the other side, I can see it a little better. Is that really a grill? Yeah. Yeah, it does look it. So see how you can see a lot better here then you can just in a little slip. And that's why sometimes when we ID, you know, we will say, you know what, we'll have to wait till we see more of the head and more of the pattern to ID. Because, um, you know, I, I get people sending me pics. You know, hi, what is it? Like, I can hardly see. It looks like a lab something. You know, that's it. It's hard to see until there, you get a bigger, clearer um, visual. And uh, look at this guy going now. He's, he's ready to tour. And this one here is getting funky. She's, he or she is doing, you know. But yeah, so, like I said, hope this video helped, um, or at least, you know, no matter which way you do it, there's many, many ways. This is just the way we do it, and what we recommend, um, you know, especially if you're gonna cut your eggs, cut them the way we do, nice little slip. If you can't see it, wait a few days. I know it's hard. To, to, you know, you want to see, and you'll even see us trying to move the snake around a little. It's like, ah, try not to fuss with it too much. Now we can see. Um, I was pretty dead on with everything except this one here. So that does look like a grail, which is amazing. So it just makes this awesome clutch even better. And yes, this is my first grail, so I am happy. Um, I've got a lot more shots at it too with combos. So, you know, but it's great achievement done so once again hope you like the video look at this guy coming up now <laughs> yeah now he's going to explore they're kissing but uh we're just basically going to put this on put it back right into the incubator and uh you know at night and in the morning i'm going to keep opening and see how many more are out and uh, what I also do too is if one is out of the egg, I'll go in and I'll just open it up, take the egg out and throw it out. Also at this stage, okay, once you cut the eggs, people are like, oh, you know, I can't, you know, they're trying to open it up and, and, and close it really quick to keep the humidity in. Okay, they open it up and do something quicker. You notice how we've had it open the almost, what, four or five minutes? At this stage, they do not need all that. They're not incubating anymore. So now we're in, you know, 84, 85 degree ambient. Well, actually, no, we're, this room is probably about 82, 83. So 82 to three ambient. Um, it, you know, it, it's not the heat and, and, the, and the, uh, the, the change of, of the heat and the humidity isn't gonna affect their development because they're already developed. So once you cut your eggs, you can go and you can look and stare at this for, for you know, many hours if you want. Um, and uh, you know, and look, while we're talking, this one's almost out. So once this animal comes out, I can come take this egg and just throw it directly out. And it's not gonna, you know, you're not gonna harm these animals at all. 
you know, unless, you know, you're in a 70 below room, you know, that's, you know, you, you know, you want to keep these at uh, a proper temp, but, it, you know, you're not going to harm these animals by going in, opening it up, taking a look, taking pictures and stuff, uh, and, and then taking the eggs out and throwing them out. So, hope I covered everything. I think I did pretty alright, eh? Not bad? I got the, I got the nod from Austin. So, I uh, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. There is a join button. Click on that if you like as well. And uh, keep the comments coming in. Uh, if you like the video like this, uh, hopefully we'll be doing more. And uh, definitely a lot more videos coming. Especially the update of this when they're out of the egg and after the shed. So, see you next video.